You walk across the desert, you climb volcano peaks, walk across misty forests around ancient trees, to finally dip into ocean waters in a coastal surf town. Seems like this would be enough for a few holiday destinations, yet you can do all of this from Tenerife, a Spanish island off the northwestern coast of Africa. If it sounds like fun, come join me and let's get lost in the beauty of Tenerife. What draws me to Tenerife the most is that it's only three hours away from mainland Spain, but at the same time it feels like you're somewhere far away and exotic. Tenerife is actually the biggest of the Canary Islands and has the largest number of endemic species. And this diversity and richness is obviously a good thing, but at the same time it felt a bit overwhelming planning my trip there. Thankfully I had the opportunity to stay there for a couple of months, which allowed me to come up with the perfect itinerary. I will share enough plans for two weeks but if you're going only for a week 10 days or even three days you can just mix and match from everything that i will list first we will go through some necessary logistics and then we will do itinerary in two parts first the south and then the north and we will end with my top few points on the island when to go? This time this is not a trick question because the weather is pretty amazing all year round, with the north being a bit more overcast, rainy and colder than the south. Where to stay? Again, no bad answers here as the island is small enough that you can drive everywhere. From the south to the north it would take approximately one hour, one hour and a half. So I only lived in the south and it worked out fine, but I think for the sake of diversity I would recommend staying about 10 days in the south and maybe 5 days in the north. As for bases in the south I would recommend either Los Cristianos, Playa de las Americas or Costa Adeje, and in the north La Ortova or Puerto de la Cruz. There are two airports, one in the south and one in the north, but again I don't think it matters that much where you land, so you could just pick the ticket that suits you best. How to get around the island? I think car would be the best option. It's actually quite reasonably priced, between 400 to 700 euros a month. But if it's not an option for you, you can still rely on public transport. It obviously limits you a bit in terms of where you can go. You can do this, and I would definitely recommend downloading the public transport app. Okay, let's start in the south. This beautiful location is a national park around El Teide, which is the third largest volcano in the world among the islands. This place is so unique that it's said to be the filming location for the Planet of Apes or the third episode of Star Wars. I'm such a massive Star Wars fan that this is enough of a selling point for me. <laughs> Visit this place! You must. The best way to see the park, in my opinion, is to drive around in a car all day, just following the spots on Google Maps. I will have two specific locations that I will recommend in the viewpoints part of this video at the end. Also, you can actually book a spot online to go on top of the volcano in a sort of like a cable car kind of thing, but you need to do it a lot in advance. I wasn't early enough, so I couldn't do it. I would not leave Tenerife without seeing the Masca Valley, which is considered by many to be the most beautiful village in Tenerife. You can either hike all the way through the village into the valley to the beach, but that would take between six to eight hours depending on your fitness level. Me personally, I opted for spending a very chill day in the Masca and I booked this restaurant called Casa Raquelme. It's a very interesting concept because you can't pick your dish. They have a set menu every single day, so you don't really know what you're going to eat. But it's a very cozy place and you eat in beautiful surroundings. Los Gigantes is another must-do in Tenerife. It's a lovely coastal town that overlooks the giant cliffs, hence the name. And you could either drive there directly or you could do a lovely coastal walk from Playa de San Juan. This would take you approximately two hours, but you could stop on the way to swim or to drink or to eat something. Now, an interesting thing, nearly one third of all species of whales and dolphins pass through Tenerife. And apparently Los Gigantes is a particularly good place for spotting them. Many companies there offer cruises to see them, but what we did was we rented a jet ski and we were lucky enough to see two dolphins and a turtle. Going south from our base in Playa de las Americas, you can check out Las Margaritas Banalas Experience. It's a guided tour of banana plantations, which are a very big part of Tenerife's landscape. As you may know, I'm not a big fan of guided tours, but this is one of those rare examples when it was really worth of time and money. You will eat a lot of bananas, you'll try a lot of banana produce and you'll learn tons. While you're there, you may want to check out Los Abri which is known for natural swimming pools. Overall, Tenerife has quite a few of those and they made me think of cenotes in Mexico. I think they're really beautiful and unique and I try to swim in each and every single one that I found. 
Another beautiful place in the area is called Playa Maria, which means yellow beach, and there you're surrounded by those magnificent rock formations and the water is crystal clear, perfect for swimming and snorkeling, but bear in mind that the currents can be quite strong, so just be careful. Further up north from that area, you'll find El Medano. It's the longest beach in Tenerife, about 2 kilometers long, and it's known for windsurfing and kitesurfing. It's where the world's championships in windsurfing take place. If you know how to do those sports, you can definitely go there, but it may not be the best place to learn, as the conditions can be a bit rough. 12 minutes by car from El Medano, you'll find Arco de Tajao. It's a natural formation made by volcanic eruptions thousands of years ago, and it looks like something out of this world. It's still quite relatively unknown, so we had the place entirely to ourselves. It's really spectacular, and if you're into photography or filming, it's just perfect for drone shots. I'd recommend spending at least three, four days around towns of Los Cristianos, Playa de las Americas, Costa Areja. Each of them has its unique atmosphere and characters so you can fully enjoy them, do a typical vacation things, go to bars, restaurants, beaches. I'll leave you with two things that I think are quite special. Siam Park is the biggest water park in Europe. It's themed around Thailand, so again, you feel like you're somewhere totally different. It has one of the world's largest water slides, if you're brave enough, and it won many, many awards for the best water park ever. So it's a great place to spend an entire day, especially when it's hot. Tenerife is also a perfect location, whether you are a pro surfer or a complete beginner. Me, personally, I started from zero and I learned surfing with Tenerife Surf Point. It was quite an experience. I'll leave in the description box more information about pricing and so on. Let's start our trip up north in the picturesque town of Ico de los Vinos. This place made me feel like I moved back in time with cobbled streets and historic architecture overlooking El Teide. This town also has the largest network of natural labyrinths of volcanic origin and the oldest tree in the island called the Drago Milenario. The tree is said to be over a thousand years old, but we cannot know for sure. What we know is that it's the oldest and largest tree of its species. It's also a national monument and a symbol of Tenerife. From there I would go to Juan de la Rambla where you can swim in a natural pool called Charco de la Laja and also I would check out Garanchico which is a lovely coastal town with a beautiful mirador which means viewpoint. Around that area we also have a natural park called Rambla de Castro. It's a beautiful area where you can hike either to the beach Playa de Castro or to the ruins of uh, Casa Hamilton and apparently this place has a long history of pirates and in the 16th century Canary Islands had more pirates than the Caribbean, so if you love nature and pirates, this place is for you. While in the north, you can't miss the UNESCO Biosphere Reserve, Parque Rural de Anaga. It's the oldest part of the island, formed 79 million years ago by a volcanic eruption. It's covered by lush and very often foggy forests, and you can either spend a couple of days hiking around here, or just driving around, enjoying the scenery and stopping here and there, which is what I did. If you opt for the road trip, you can go through the Anaga Mountain Road. While in the park, I would definitely stop by Playa de Benijo, which has Benijo Mirador, which overlooks the northern shores, and it's quite spectacular, especially at sunset. Finally, if you need a plan for one more day, I would combine the towns of San Cristobal, Santa Cruz, and Playa de Teresitas. San Cristobal is the historical heart of the island. It has beautiful colonial-style architecture, it's filled with color and lush palm trees. Santa Cruz is the capital. It did not impress me too much, but you can still go and see it. And Playa de las Teresitas is considered by many the most beautiful beach in the north. Interestingly, the sand that it has was brought from the Sahara Desert in 1970s and it's quite unique because most of the island has black sand from volcano and this one is beautiful golden sand, so here it's quite unique. Okay, we covered a lot. Now the question is, where do we go to get a good view of everything from above? I have three spots for you. In El Teide National Park, go to La Ruleta Viewpoint. It will get you a very good view not only on the volcano, but also on the valley and the surrounding rock formations. You need to hike a bit to get to the top, so wear good shoes. Another great spot to see the volcano is Mirador de Chipeca. Don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but I'm trying really hard for you here. It's located more in the north, at approximately 1,830 meters above the sea level. So very often here you'll experience 
being above the clouds. This one is a bit of a hidden gem. It's quite hard to find. It's just called Mirador on Google Maps. It's in the north next to Tacaronte. I'll leave the exact pin so that you can find it easily in the description box. Once you get to the location from Google Maps, you will be in a residential area and you will need to find a staircase. Once you get to the staircase, you will just have to walk down until you see the view. It's quite spectacular and it will be worth it, I promise. If seeing all this is not enough for you, well, maybe you should consider moving to Tenerife. And if moving to Tenerife sounds too extreme, maybe I can talk you into working there remotely for a couple of weeks, which I cover in my other video.